Reliability Challenges and Checks Welcome to Lesson 5 of this ANSYS Innovation course. In this lesson, we will explore the concept of reliability, its significance in modern day system on chip and the reasons behind the decreased functionality of your everyday devices like mobile phones over the years. We will delve into the factors responsible for the reliability of a chip such as electromigration and electrostatic discharge, employing examples and analogies for better understanding. Towards the end, we will discuss techniques to mitigate reliability issues in SOC, ensuring the reliability of your devices. Let's take a mobile phone as an example to understand reliability. Several factors need to be considered before declaring a mobile phone reliable. Battery life A reliable mobile phone should have a battery that functions for a certain period under standard usage conditions. If the battery life fails to meet the expectation lifespan, it can lead to inconvenience. Hardware and durability The hardware of the mobile phone should be designed to withstand various climatic and pressure conditions. It should also be water resistant to protect the device on rainy days. Storage As we store a lot of important data on our phones, it is essential that we can save and retrieve our data whenever necessary, making good storage a key reliable factor. Performance the performance of a mobile phone should remain consistent over time. Often we observe mobile phones lagging during simple operations as they age. For a mobile phone to be considered reliable, all the above factors need to remain consistent over a certain period. Reliability in SOC is essentially the measure of change in certain parameters over time. If these changes exceed a certain threshold, the device will fail. Different electronic products have different lifespans. For instance, a smartphone processor typically lasts around 3 to 5 years, while a server chip has a lifespan of up to 10 years. These products are also subjected to different environmental conditions like temperature and pressure. For example, automotive chips need to withstand higher temperatures compared to mobile chips. Chip in aerospace applications have different requirements depending upon their proximity to the atmosphere. Certain product grades have a higher impact on human life, making it crucial to ensure their reliability. These include defense, healthcare and aerospace. Now let's delve into the main concept of chip reliability, which is electromigration. Electromigration can be understood with the help of a simple example. When water flows over stones over a period, it slowly erodes the stone and carries the material along. This is due to the friction between the water and the stones caused by the movement of water. Similarly, when electrons flow through a conductor, they collide with the atoms of the conductor, causing them to move from one place to another. This process is known as electromigration, which signifies the migration of atoms due to electrons. Let us delve deeper into this concept. When an electron moves in a conductor under a certain voltage, it collides with its ions and transfers its momentum. This applies a force on the atom, denoted as F-wind. There is another force due to the electric field, denoted as F-field, which is in the opposite direction of F-wind. When F-wind is much greater than F-field, the ions will move from their original positions. Due to the collision of electrons with ions, these ions tend to move from their original position and accumulate elsewhere. The places from where atoms have moved create empty spaces known as void, as shown in the figure. These atoms 
accumulate at other places forming hill like structures known as hillocks over time these voids can become open circuits while the hillocks can short with adjacent metals causing a short circuit both these occurrences can impact the functionality and performance of the chip let's discuss the factors that impact electromigration current when current flows through a conductor with a current density say j an increase in the current will lead to a greater number of electrons moving through the same cross sectional area this amplifies the electromigration process as more electrons will collide with the atoms dimensions of wire if we decrease the width of conductor through which the current is flowing the same current will flow through a small cross section area this results in more collision of electrons with ions leading to higher em from the above two points we can conclude that current density impacts electromigration changes in either current or in area will affect electromigration temperature an increase in temperature leads to a higher kinetic energy of atoms causing them to move faster and resulting in increased em resistivity of material some materials with higher conductivity are less impacted by electromigration for example copper has higher conductivity than aluminum hence the speed of electromigration will be impacted by factors such as current temperature resistivity of material defects in material etc this is governed by black's equation now let us discuss some electromigration mitigation techniques increase the width of the metal if we increase the width of the conductor it will decrease the current density resulting in lesser em however we cannot increase the width beyond a certain limit due to drc rules drc that is design rule check verifies if the design meets certain requirements set by the foundry like the width of the metal or the space between the two metals providing multiple paths for current if we have a current say i1 in a conductor and we observe an em violation we can fix it by providing a parallel path and dividing the current as shown in the figure i1 gets divided into i2 and i3 as the current decreases in the conductor it results in the fixing of em violation however due to the routing congestion we may not always be able to provide a parallel path metal stacking and via array if there is a large amount of current flowing through m1 and we do not have any parallel paths we can use the metal above m2 to create a stack of m1 and m2 and connect them with via arrays this will also fix the em violation as it helps in dividing the current however metal stacking takes up a lot of routing tracks to implement and it is only recommended when we have sufficient area such as in analog designs bletch length electro migration does not just occur due to current density but it also depends on the absolute length of the conductor we can prevent em violations if the product of current density and absolute length of the conductor is below a given threshold this threshold is dependent upon the technode and its value is provided by the foundry for instance if we have a long conducting wire of 9 micrometer which has an em violation and the bletch length given by the foundry is 3 micrometer dividing the 9 micrometer length metal into smaller pieces of 3 micrometer resolves the em issue as shown in the figure it is important to note that the bletch length concept is related to the product of current density and length of the conductor if the current is too high 
then even after dividing the conductor it may not resolve the issue the next reliability concept is electrostatic discharge due to constant friction from air and other surroundings humans and machines tend to accumulate static electricity as we have seen in the experiment of rubbing a comb on our head it attracts small pieces of paper due to static electricity we know that chips are very sensitive to voltages above their nominal voltage ratings when a charged entity comes in contact with a chip a very large current flows through the chip destroying it this can also happen through contact with other devices esd event an esd event occurs when due to static charge a huge current flows and damages the chip there are several ways an esd current can interact with the chip some of them are mentioned below human body model this model of esd event occurs when static charge from the external world damages the chip for example when a human or a machine comes in contact with a chip current flows through the chip and can damage the circuit as we can see from the table the voltage generated due to human contact is very large it is in the order of kilovolts hence it can damage the circuits and protection from such events is required therefore human contact should be avoided and it is recommended to wear gloves in a lab while working on a chip charge device model in the charge device model static charge accumulates inside the chip which needs to be discharged through some pin this is another way static charge can interact with the chip this event only happens for a short duration of 1 nanosecond but the amount of current that flows is huge it is in the order of 1 to 15 ampere hence the need for protection of the chip from such high currents becomes critical from the above discussion we understood the typical voltages and current values that a chip may interact with protection from esd as we understood that an esd event can occur either due to human interaction or a charged device we need to devise such a protection scheme from such events primary protection when an esd event occurs at the pad a large amount of current flows this can damage the circuit however as shown in the diagram as soon as the voltage comes on the pad diode a comes into forward bias and this large current is discharged into vdd instead of traveling into the circuit through the resistor similarly if a negative voltage comes at the pad diode b will be in forward bias and it will discharge the current into ground secondary protection even after this protection sometimes there can be some current that flows into our circuit and it can damage the circuit to protect the circuit further we introduce secondary protection this protection is kept near the chip to protect the thin oxides so if some extra current is going into the chip we can pass it through a resistor r and later have a clamp circuit that will send this current to vdd or vss to summarize reliability is a very important factor for the dependability on any product and it is crucial in building the trust reliability is very important in soc designs and ansys provides a solution to simulate the reliability of electronic products ansys redox sc simulates electro migration based parameters which affect the reliability of an soc ansys pathfinder sc is used to check esd based reliability analysis in soc furthermore 
ANSYS Pathfinder SC checks EM limits during an ESD event due to high currents flowing through the circuits.